He means to order. We also have a special council meeting tonight. We're going to try to work these together, uh, kind of blend them in a little bit. Uh, we also, for some scheduling issues, we're going to raise, move the finance committee to the front. And so at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Haskey to handle his committee. We're going to take number seven. Uh, we'll, we'll do that one, Justin, if that's okay. We'll pull it out in the special council meeting and talk about it since this is both areas. So we'll just take items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and then we'll come back to 7. You're on mute still. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, item number 8 on the agenda is the self-contained breathing apparatus replacement. Um, Chief Isabel provided a staff report in the agenda to consider financing the purchase of replacement self-contained breathing apparatus with the Government Capital Corporation. Um, this item is a budget replacement of the fire department SCBA equipment. The current equipment is at the end of its life with many components expiring in March of 2022. The current equipment is 15 years old and non-serviceable. The annual payment for purchase costs not to exceed 44,000. Um, Chief, uh, don't know if you're there in the podium. Might yes, be able to expand on that. There was a couple other things I think that we wanted, wanted to discuss pairing this with as well. That's correct. Uh, Mayor, Council, uh, Chairman Hashkey. The SCBA replacement uh, request or the financing for tonight is just for the replacement of our normal SCBA that we use on fires and hazmat and any confined space where we would have to breathe off the tanks. Uh, it is at end of life and this was budgeted this year. We, as we prepared to bring the financing forward, uh, really in the 11th hour, there was some realization that we are also preparing a cardiac monitor, the 12 lead monitor replacement this year as well. And there is some uh, financial benefits to pairing that financing <laughs> together, uh, specifically in the, the interest rate and the term. And we can do that and uh, save uh, a considerable <laughs> amount of money over the term of that financing. Uh, and so we were we were looking for approval to take the SCBA financing forward, but also consideration of pairing that with uh, uh, the option to pair that with the cardiac monitor financing uh, as we go forward to council. And commit or is there any question, Isabel, on this on this item? Chief, on the on the. Uh, <clears throat> On the SBCA equipment, I know we we bought new bottles just a couple of years ago that I think were the old ones we had were we were going to be out of compliance or something. What are your plans with those bottles that are just a couple of years old? So the the bottles are today's SCBA components. All the manufacturers are going to a um, it's a universal connection and fitting. Some of them could be used. Some of them can be sold and or traded in. We have a large uh, number of those bottles that are just need to go to the trash mm -hmm. they cannot be reused for uh, any airfields going forward okay thank you what was the total, uh, that, what was the total cost of the cardiac <laughs> for the, the, the 12 lead cardiac monitors we budgeted 105 okay was that the total expense or the, the financing charge of the one of five. Yeah, but it's in that. Oh, look at Monica to help me out here. Um, the total expense was one of five. Um, the financing uh, piece of it would take our payments from forty three eight seventy nine twenty six to sixty thousand four seventy eighty one. What we looked at uh, was doing the cardiac monitors. We would. Uh, consider their useful life seven years instead of the ten with the SCBA because they're a little bit smaller type of equipment and so we we got with our uh, financing company and, and checked and so what they're doing is the first seven payments would be sixty thousand four seventy eighty one which would be for both the SCBAs and the heart monitors and then the last three payments would just be the forty three eight seventy nine twenty six which would just be for the SCBAs. 
And like we you were about uh, what was the total budgeted financing expense on a basis for this that was put in the book? We had over sixty six thousand budgeted uh, in in the annual payments for it. For the two okay. combined. The two of them, yes. And this would put it at sixty thousand four seventy eight. Is that correct? That would be correct if you chose the option to do both. What's the pleasure of the committee? Mr. Chair, I make the motion that we forward council a recommendation to approve the joint financing for both as presented. Second. I vote second to approve. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. So I'll go to council with a positive recommendation. Um, item number nine, um, the best Main Street manager position. And, uh, Mr. Barnes, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Let me pull up my staff report. Uh, I'll wing it. Um, as you're aware, we were uh, selected to be a the only Main Street City joining the Main Street program in January of 2021. We hired a uh, uh, Main Street manager who has recently left. <coughs> uh, we also uh, brought on for a very short period uh, Terry Colley, who was the assist the former who is the former assistant executive director of, uh, of uh, uh, the Texas Historic Commission and during his time uh, I requested Mr. Colley to take a look at our uh, at our uh, program and make recommendations to improve it uh, in talking with him the last time I spoke with him, uh, he advised me that he, he would recommend changing our pay level from the approximate $38,000, it was 37 and change. Uh, anyway, he suggested that we raise it to between 50 and 52, uh, I'm sorry, 52 and $55,000 as a starting salary. Uh, I requested uh, the salaries of the Main Street managers in the cities about our size. Uh, that uh, showed that, that uh, populations ranged between 20,070 and 28,851. The average population was 24,376. The salaries ranged from 45,3 to 69,000 with the average being 57,579. The average experience, or I'm sorry, the experience range from 0.35 years to 35 years with an average of 6.9 years. The only salary in the salary survey that Mr. Thurman has been working on is mineral wells and their salary range is 60,000 to 88,668. Uh, Mr. Colley recommended the fifty-two to fifty-five thousand uh, dollar range because he felt what we could, like what we could do is get either somebody with some experience from a smaller program or somebody that's been with a program our size for a period of time that is trying to take a step up, and and that it would get us someone with experience. Uh, ran the the financials today. Currently, we have. 48397 budgeted for the cost of this position, that salary, insurance, the whole should be managed. Uh, at $55,000, uh, the total cost would be $72,128, and the uh, total physical impact would be $23,731, and again, that includes some benefits such as the one-time adjustment uh, one-time salary adjustment and the 1% additional retirement. Uh, and with that, uh, the alternatives that, that we have found is the, the committee can advance that to uh, full council 
uh, they can advance it with a negative recommendation or they can take no action. The staff respectfully recommends the approval of this and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Barnes? Alan, what attempts have we made to try to fill that position mm. full time since the previous employee at this At this time, there has been none because we have been in the process of reviewing not only our job description, <coughs> but job descriptions from the other Main Street cities and cities outside. Uh, based on the outcome of this, this meeting tonight, uh, I anticipate the announcement of the position go out early next week. What do you think timeline on a higher date would be? I don't want to rush it. But I mean, <coughs> uh, we'll probably see where we are about two weeks in uh, to see how many applications that we have. Uh, if if we have quality ad, uh, applications at that time, we'll begin interviews. If not, we'll wait another week or ten days and uh, take a look at what we have. I'll make a motion that we recommend to full council the uh, salary range for this position to be the 52 to 55 as presented. I have a motion to have a second. Second for discussion. Thank you. I'm looking for something here, sorry. I have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion on the matter. I was looking for something here, Justin, if you'll give me just a minute. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> uh, well, while he's looking that up, I did think of a question, Alan, as far as the discussion. So the recommendation as far as the salary code, were there any other recommendations that uh, the interim um, Main Street person made as it relates to the description or responsibilities? No, sir. He, he did recommend that, that we review the other uh, job descriptions as provided by, by THC and to incorporate what we felt like would be a, a good fit for our community. There are, other, there, there are other recommendations, however, I have not seen those yet as our parks director uh, has them and she's been quarantined with COVID for the past week, week and a half. What did you say the average was? Uh, according to THC, the average salary is $57,579. Sir, is our interim, interim manager already gone? Yes, sir. He, he, was a, he is a bivocational minister, uh, pastor at a church in, in uh, uh, Fort Worth, and he advised that his time constraints, that, that, that this job did not fit into his time constraints. <clears throat> Finally, found what I'm looking for. Sorry. <clears throat> hmm. You found what you're looking for? Uh, yeah, give me just one second. Okay. I had a few a few others besides mineral wells on that paste. You, you may be that. I know initially but we had two different ones. Okay, so. the the copy I've got only has mineral. Yeah, so that average was forty seven to sixty two. I, I guess my concern with that is we've got. We've got some very similar positions that are not that, that high. Would be my, that would be my question to the personnel chairman. If we've done a salary study, we've came up with these ranges. <clears throat> we haven't gone back out to try to fill this. Uh, granted, I think maybe the caliber or, or what we want, it's going to be hard to get anybody. It's $38,000. I mean, we've got several positions that are hard to fill that in that range but I, I just what does this do to our to our salary studies that we've done and, and I, I don't know that'd be my only concern well and I don't think we ever did a salary survey on we haven't done one since that position was created so 
Well, I'll tell you, I just think it's imperative we get somebody with some experience at this time in the position. I don't feel like that we're in a situation at this point with the program to hire somebody to train on the job. I think the only way we're going to pay for it. If we really want the program to succeed and it needs to desperately succeed if we want to see some changes downtown, and that's the only reason why we commend the resources to start the program. I'm not saying that there's not good young candidates that maybe don't have experience that could do it, but I don't think that's what we need at this point for this position. And I agree we need we need the, the experience would definitely help with the position because I feel like through whatever it's been very rudderless through that position. And and for what have we gotten for what we paid, I don't you know. I know there's work been done. I'm not here to blame anybody for any of it. But if that's what we think will take us to the next level, somebody that's got that experience and that's what it's going to take, then I'll be for it. But like we've talked about with the planner position or that, I don't want to raise the position and then bring in somebody that doesn't have this that experience. No, sir, I don't. You, 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 is, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I, absolutely. I'd be really disappointed to me. I, I, I would not be surprised if you come back and tell me that we still can't in that range get the qualified candidates. That would not shock me. I mean, would that be the response versus, yeah, we're going to hire this person. We, we like him or her, and yet she or he has no experience. That would be very disappointing. Is there any impact? Um, I know that there's been some ripple effects of pay increases in the past. What would this have? What impact would this pay increase have as it relates to the pay scale of the city uh, currently? I really can't give a definitive answer because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. The only similar position that uh, that we have is our tourism director or our tourism manager, and she makes a little bit above the 55. I don't know if it's 57 or 58, something like that. She's going just a little bit over. So somewhere she's she's somewhere in that that cost range um, uh, that's really the only comparable position that I can think of all right any other discussion on that all right, all right. It would, can I hang on sorry Did, will you clarify what the motion what what how would what was that motion exactly I think the motion I made was to recommend the full council uh, approval of adjusting the salary of range of the position to 52, 55 as recommended. So 52 is a minimum and 55 is a maximum? Mm -hmm. That was the, how the motion was stated. The 55, uh, when we hire somebody with a certain number of years experience up to five years, I think it is, or 10 years, we can increase that salary up to 10% and that's what the 55 is, is the approximately 10% higher than the, the 52. <clears throat> Unless you made it the, the top, and then it would be the top. Well, we're fixed to adjust all of this. I'm, I'm right. fine with the, you know, we've got to fix the problem. I've just. Right. And and that's the reason I say if, if you want to make uh, the range 52 to 55 and we'll decide what happens in the, the, with the salary survey. That's fine. I, just got a, I have a responsibility to get somebody in that position and, I'll, and, and I've got to have a motivated self-starter. I, I, I do too. Uh, have to have a motivated self-starter. Feed that dog. And I need somebody, I need somebody with with experience in this position. Okay, I, if I can offer, uh, I guess make a motion to amend the um, the minimum at 47 with a maximum of 55. Second. Second. Okay, so we've got an amendment. The motion is recommending to council minimum 47, maximum pay of 55. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed, same side. All right. Motion will go to uh, recommendation. Yeah, you got to vote. Get a vote on the original motion now. Yeah. That was just the amendment. That was just the amendment. Yeah. So now we'll 
got to go back to their actual original amendment, which is now modified or amended to. Um, the motion was the 52 to 55, and it was modified. And then we've approved that. Now we've got to go back and approve the actual motion. Okay. So Sorry. Any other original motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the original motion, 52 to 55, say aye. Aye. As amended to 47 to 55. 47 to 55. As amended to 47. Yep. Aye. And those same time. There we go. Okay. So that'll go to council with positive recommendation. Um, item number 10 discuss request for proposal of depository services. Um, Monica <coughs> provided support uh, recommending accepting the first financial bank proposal for depository <coughs> service uh, and presenting to council for approval on the first two. <coughs> this record be for two years with one two-year extension provided both parties agree to the extension maybe a few bars here in just a second apologize uh requests for proposals for depository services were advertised on november 10th 2021 um, and november 17 2021 the city received the proposals from texas bank and first financial staff reviewed and evaluated both proposals uh, there was a comparison provided um, and uh, let's see, one of the items noted additional, uh, additional three hours for ACH submittal would be helpful with payroll as a senior accountant frequently works late on Tuesdays to make the ACH submittal. <laughs> um, take, as the table indicates, the timing and the rate calculation does make a difference. Our first financial does have a minimum interest rate of 0.05%. With the T bill, T bill rates um, would have to increase to 2.15 percent for Texas Bank's proposal to exceed First Financial. Um, any questions for Monica in regards to this item? Who are we using right now? We are currently with Texas Bank, and we have no issues with them. They, you know, they're both local banks. They're both reputable banks. Um, a lot of the proposals are, are, they were saying, you know, neither one of them uh, were going to, they were going to waive the fees, you know, just your, you know, standard banking fees and, and um, they had, you know, similar hours and, and, you know, obviously they're going to follow the rules for collateralization at 102%. It just came down to kind of the, the extended time on the ACH being a little bit better for our staff and then obviously the uh, interest rate was a, was a factor. We have a motion. Uh, make a motion to approve the acceptance of request for proposal for depository services to First Financial Bank. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the original motion, 52 to 55. Aye. Aye. And opposed, same. So that will go to council with a positive recommendation to accept the first financial bank uh, RFP. Um, item number 11, <coughs> over 65 properties. Um, in the staff report, staff respectfully recommends the committee forward the ordinance to the city council for their approval. Um, I don't have a copy of an ordinance, but um, the background is over 65 tax free has recently been approved by Eberath County. Um, the state of Texas also gives cities the authority to grant a freeze of taxes for those residents over the age of 65. Multiple, um, several of, of us have expressed interest in considering a similar measure. Um, currently, the school district has 1,065 residences that qualify for the over 65 break for the school district. Um, we are waiting for a copy of a, I didn't see one in the agenda. We don't have a copy of an ordinance. Is that correct, Alan? Uh, that's correct. I've not had an opportunity to review it today. I got it this afternoon from Randy. I'll send it out tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, we request the calculation of the fiscal impact. I know, um, 
Mr. Carey is there this evening to answer any questions. Um, and I know that her office has, and the appraisal district has worked um, with Mr. Thurman on some of these items or questions. Is there any questions by the committee on this item? What's the impact? Uh, well, I would, I had which we've got right. The number I got from the appraisal district was that we have currently have 990 parcels with a total value of 177 million 107 thousand forty dollars that would qualify. And I probably have to just turn it over to Jennifer to talk about potential impacts. <laughs> <laughs> she, she understands that much better than I do. Yeah. The Here, district's giving you the values. Correct. Right. That's the value. That would be our base value. Freeze. It's tax dollars that freeze. Mm -hmm. So, Jennifer, if you don't mind, a lot of people watching this one because yeah. this, this works. So, so, so that get up there and speak my at, mind. At our current, at that current valuation, at our current tax rate, that's seven hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred and thirteen dollars in revenue. That would be locked. And that's what that would be. Th that would be the number. The frozen number. That would be the freeze, but. Right. Since you're looking at it in the calendar year of 22, it would be based on your 22 tax dollars. It's not going to be based on any of the tax dollars that we know of at this time for anybody that is over the age of 65. Um, you also offer the statute for school districts is the freezes on over 65 and disabled persons. So. <laughs> you as a city and us as the county have the option to do one or the other or both um, the county chose to only do the over 65 accounts so you the city offers an over 65 exemption of 15,000 and you also offer the disabled person exemption of 10,000 that gets deducted off of their taxable value on only the home sites. So if you have 20 acres, and I better use 25 because you can homestead up to 20. Uh, if you have 25 acres, it's cheaper on you <coughs> to keep the 19 or I should say 24 acres in ag and the one acre as your home site. <coughs> but some people opt to have the whole thing. Granted the uh, people that have 100% disabled vet exemption because they get to freeze everything. Am I helping or hurting? Does the does the 100% disabled vet do they pay any property tax? No. That's why. That's why. Okay, you said freeze. That's why I'm not. On make sure. on the home site. It's mm -hmm. only on homestead. Yes. So if they have ag land. It's more beneficial for them to turn the whole, whole thing the into, mm -hmm. into okay. home site. And Mr. Huckabee, to, to I guess find a short answer for your question, Ms. Carey's provided a comparison. If we had approved this in 2020, <coughs> uh, the the payment by over 65 was about $700,000. In 2021, the uh, payment would have been just over $750,000, which would be a $50,000 a year difference. Uh, our tax, our tax receivables are somewhere in the six million to six and a half million dollar range. Uh, the, the excuse me, disabled would go from. Uh, 15,000 in 2020 to 16,9 in 2021 or $1,815.27. So the total, if the freeze had been adopted in 2020, was 52,090.17. And these are just down and dirty numbers that I got after talking with Alan and then talking. With Monica, I called my software vendor and said, "Hey, can you do what you did for me back in December for the for the county and and run the city's numbers real quick?" And the only actual numbers that we have, of course, are the 20s and the 21s. We don't we have no clue what 22 is going to even look like. So this just gives you an idea. Monica did a projection. 
if you have this much increase in the fact that uh, the homesteads have a 10% cap of going up and um, estimating what round 60, round 60. so because your first year of freeze is going to be 22 and you'll see it when it reflects in 23 Mr. Chair, I'm not a member of your committee, but can I ask a question? <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, what does this do to our existing exemptions? Do they remain in place? As long as you do not change your amount, your amount is 15000 for the um, over 65 exemption. So as long as that remains the same, if you raise your exemption, to uh, 25 or 20 or something, then definitely it will change what your freeze level would be. But that remains intact unless we elect to change it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And those are things that we would want to be <coughs> done prior to the appraisal district mailing notices when they have to send out appraisal notices. People hate getting those appraisal notices and by the time they get the tax statement, it's a lot different. Mm -hmm. And this is a freeze of the actual tax pay. Just tax dollars on tax the home dollars. portion only. <laughs> Correct. And that would never change as they continued homestead ownership of the property unless they did significant improvements to the property. Unless they added on to it, right. added a swimming pool, Right. Added an enclosed carport. And something. that would be adjusted yes. to the current value at the current tax rate and added to their total. So if they added on a swimming pool of $25,000, they're not going to go back to do the whole thing. Only the tax dollars on that $25,000 times the latest tax rate would be added to their freeze ceiling. Because Perfect. when you do a freeze, it creates a ceiling. So as we've I don't know how much of you have seen the, the tax notices in the, in the past couple of years, but with school taxes that have had the freezes for quite a few years, um, the ones that don't have a, a bonded indebtedness or anything so that they're paying off, um, as the state legislature mandated and the tax rates have been dropping and the values have not really been changing, some of the people have wound up with less school taxes this year than they paid last year. Now, that's not going to remain the same because they created a ceiling. So if their ceiling was $1,500 in taxes, and this year they only wound up paying $1,200 in, in school taxes, but next year something happens, the values go up, the highest they can go is the $15,000. So when we say there's a freeze, there is, but you're creating a freeze ceiling. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I think that's an important explanation for people to understand how it works. And Monica, you said the <clears throat> the physical note on this would be about sixty thousand dollars. You're anticipating? Yes, for the first year. For the first year. Yes, because then of course is values and things rise and you know depending on where we and that's the assuming that we went the, the full 10 percent uh, increase on all the properties and then us going with the no new revenue if you decided to go higher it'd be a little bit more but and the total number of properties ricky was 990 990 but i think that's important <coughs> an ever moving number is that i mean that's a fair way to look at that jennifer is that correct <laughs> Well, I don't know what the appraisal district's giving you. Working, on, I mean, they're looking at 22 stuff. I'm still way back in 21. So the latest supplement I did, you have <coughs> right today, 1,082 accounts that have an over 65 exemption on them. So if they've, I mean. That's, that's going to be a constantly moving target with people moving in, people moving out. Uh, and so that's not even getting into the transfer of a freeze um, that I talked to Monica about because that can happen too. You, you freeze in one house, you move to another, you're going to be freezing, you're going to be transferring that percentage of that freeze over to the new home. So. 
there's, there's a lot of different moving variables that can happen. So, so is it fair to say <coughs> it's virtually impossible to project what it, was, what it would look like five years from now? Well, I can tell you that from <laughs> just this last supplement that I worked on Sunday, uh, there were, I guess we, the appraisal district sent to me supplemental changes that had, there was 10 over 65 freezes that came on. <laughs> Um, school district because mm -hmm. the rest of us aren't frozen yet so it's a it's a constantly moving target um, years ago you signed up for your exemptions if you hadn't signed up so bad you wait till next year now you have up to three years to go back and claim so we're constantly doing adjustments and refunds <laughs> and Jennifer hates refunds but anyway so it's it's a moving target all the time it, it's, it changes so um, for a school district um, if I just had to add an over 65 in 2019 that created a freeze and so I had to adjust the 20s and then the 21s because it had to go back to what that ceiling was that's great information Jennifer thank you for for spending time Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Call me or email me if you have any other questions that pop up. I'm sure we will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. I'm not. I'm not positive. Six of my staff are positive, but I am not yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I hope you do. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you Jennifer. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Barnes. I, <laughs> thank you so much. How many uh, of the cities that you've been in? What has been your experience with how many of them had an over 65 exemption or freeze? Honestly, I think two of them did and two of them did not. Uh, I'm not sure if we voted, if the council voted in the, the uh, tax uh, exemption, the $15,000 exemption or if they voted to freeze the taxes in the city of Liberty. I'm not sure. City of Saxe, I believe, did freeze the taxes while I'm It's in my in my research throughout the <coughs> Metroplex uh, in these urban areas, it's very common. I mean it's very common. City of Fort Worth, North Richmond Hills, all these they all they all have it. Countywide and citywide. So. Do they have exemptions also Correct. for sixty five and then they have the freeze? Yes sir. <coughs> well, I, you know, one of the reasons I wanted us to look at this is because our, it's going to be on our doorstep in a month or two anyway. Um, so I guess the only recommendation I would have is, I mean, I don't, to me, might as well go ahead and add the disabled part of it as well, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. I, yeah it's right. a virgin item allows us to do both those tonight. Because I, 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 I think that the goal of this is to help people that are on fixed income. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and as we have the growth and the ability to do that, that's, that's to me, that's the goal of this, is to help those people that are on fixed income. The taxes go up, but their paycheck is, is the same every year. And, and we need to, I think we do need to do this to help them do that. So. One of the things that, that helped me to understand this is to look at it in terms of a, of a TIF, which you're all familiar with. In a TIF, we deal with the increment or the delta between the base and, and the future years. And we've all along said it's not money that we, we have. It's money that we would have. And so this is the, this is the same mindset. Right. I would make a motion that we move forward with a tax freeze over 65 and for the disabled exemptions. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. Motion carries and a positive recommendation to council. <clears throat> and item number 12, the issue of the certificates of obligation. Um, staff is requesting the Finance Committee recommend moving forward issuing certificates of obligation to Council for approval on February 1st, 2022. Uh, proceeds from the issuing bills. 
Um, we'll be obligated $20 million for water sewer and related infrastructure and $2 million for park improvements. Um, at a timetable, as a part of the attachment, questions have also arisen regarding the refunding of the series 2013 GO bonds. Uh, the GO bonds cannot be refunded by issuing COs. However, state law does allow for the issue of refunding without an election. Uh, essentially, it gives us the option to do the issuance of both the revenue bonds and the GO as a package deal, but they would be two separate issuances. Would save on issuance costs um, taking in the market. Uh, there is a, a substantial uh, fiscal impact of refunding those 2013 geo bonds to the tune of $400,000 um, over the term of those bonds, depending on which which method of financing we chose. <coughs> Any questions or discussions for Monica on this? No questions. Um, do we have a motion? Am I frozen? You no, we hear you. We hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make a motion. Why not? That we recommend to full council the issue and fee obligations. Let's see. Let's see. I guess as presented to the, as presented to council, yes. Second. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got a motion to the issuance of the COs and Brady, does your motion include the brief uh, explore the refunding of the two thousand thirteen? It it did not bonds to? it did not, Mr. Haskey, that was my takeaway. We did not want to do that. We do want to do it. We do want to do it, okay. okay. I guess we do. I we thought don't that's I, 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 would, I guess we need to amend the motion then. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, to uh, include the 2013 bonds in that. Second. How much is remaining on that 2013 bond issue? Do I, am I overlooking that? No, I, I would like to get that in the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so is that an amendment to the original motion then? That'd be correct. Did you have a second? And we have, a, and Brady, you seconded that motion? That's fine. Okay. No further discussion. I would I just like a breakdown of those geo bonds. I mean, I absolutely, if we can save four hundred and sixty thousand two hundred fifty nine dollars by doing it, we should save half a million dollars. But can I get a breakdown of what that is? It's in the in the packet. If you'll scroll down, there's one that says Stephenville, Texas, general obligation refunding bond series 20, 2022. Uh, let me see what page it's on in this. The whole package. Maybe verbally, can we? Have yes, that I will go over it verbally. For, for the people watching. Um, we have a payment coming up in February, and of course, we'll have to pay that. But um, <coughs> what we would be refunding um, the debt service would be just over uh, four million. And then the the new refunding debt service would be uh, three point five million, and so uh, you're looking about four sixty two fifty nine that we would be saving on uh, interest and in being able to do that, and that it's it matures in uh, twenty thirty three. That bond has an average uh, coupon rate of three point seven six, and they're looking at a. Um, uh, uh, true interest cost on the refunding is 1.45 percent. So, yeah, that's it's a fairly significant it's a saving. Savings. So, and and we, uh, Mr. Barnes, if if you want, I think we kind of need direction on whether we're looking at a 15-year, 20-year, or 25 uh, debt issuance. On the POs. Yes, please. It was my understanding coming out of Thursday's meeting that, that it was 
be a 20 year I mean I think that was the term that was discussed. that's kind of the number I wasn't I at that so. meeting so sorry but um, yeah that's, that's kind of what that's our, what fits in with our rate structure and yes. how we did everything that's that's right. planning for this because we're not raising <coughs> any taxes we're not doing anything for this it's part of our rate structure that we've done that sure. allows us to go to market to get today's prices to do these projects sure okay. and, and would <coughs> that did not include the potential two million for parks correct it does it, it does. does it does, it does. Uh, of course that's a separate funding source to right to clarify the uses uh, the proposed use so far is to uh, oh I see it. I'm sorry. perform our, our well field work that would be uh, drilling five additional water wells to, uh, that will service our community for, for decades to come it would include the infrastructure necessary on the 568 or 563 sorry about that 560, whatever it is uh, it would uh, include the transmission line back to the airport pump station it would also include <coughs> excuse me uh, redoing and, and by redoing I mean completely reconstructing uh, the utilities on along Long Street from from uh, Alexander to Graham it would also because of the the nature and the, the poor conditions of the, the utilities would require us also to pave that that street uh, and everybody's favorite uh, anytime we do major construction work we do have to make it ADA compliant or Texas accessible accessibility compliant and <coughs> all of those costs are rolled into the estimates on that, on that project uh, <coughs> there may we, we've estimated these on an inflationary scale based on, on what we understand should be done and any additional funds it, it will be worded that any additional funds will go to fund water or sewer uh, projects elsewhere in the city and again, these are user, they're already paying for them on the water. Bill. Did you say the third battle was the Eastside Sewer? No, sir. Uh, <coughs> we worded it, or we will word it to where <coughs> it will be discretionary uh, for the council uh, we've, we've said water and sewer projects throughout the community uh, some of it very well may be phase three of uh, the east side sewer there may be some budgetary already budgetary numbers assigned to the east side sewer that, that may again leave a residual amount of any bond or co proceeds <laughs> That's strictly because we don't know what phase one is going to cost us. We don't know what phase one of the money that we've we've already right. and been able to bid it yet. Correct. Right. So uh, we may have some savings out of there that can immediately go to the phase three portion. Yes, <coughs> and that's why we need to leave this. And and we have allocated some funds in the budget to also go to phase three. I feel relatively comfortable that we should be able to cover most of the cost of phase three, if not all of the cost of phase three. Let's do it. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, so this is the vote on the amendments. All those in favor say aye. 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 And by the same sign. And then the original vote, or the original motion as an as amendment. amendment. Uh, <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. All right. Mr. Mayor, I think that equals all of the items on our finance committee meeting this evening. Thank you. Turn back over to you. Uh, Ms. Durfee, you want to go to tourism? We have uh, some visitors who need to leave. I understand. Okay. I'll let you go. Okay. Um, we received a request from the Tarleton State Rodeo 
team for the 55th annual Stampede Rodeo, which is held in April. Um, we have funded them in the past. I'm not sure if they had it last year because of COVID. Um, they are in our budget for 7,500, and this is an allowable hotel occupancy tax expense as it is sporting and advertising. It's a multi-day event. Just a couple questions real quick. I know yeah, this is kind of a carryover item, so I want to put it from back in the chamber days. Um, I guess as we've been servicing this event for a couple of years now, I mean, is there anything that Tarl provides us with to verify that they're filling hotels? They certainly can, and I'm happy to contact the hotels as well. Um, this is a large rodeo similar to the one, the Cowboy Capital of the World Rodeo. <laughs> they either meet or exceed the numbers that attend this event. And I'm happy to verify the hotel stays. And actually, I want to continue to support the 100% and this amount or, or more amount, but I just want to make sure that we hold everybody to the same criteria that we ask about. So. Does this level of, of contribution on our part secure a sponsorship role for the city as it has in the past? Yes, it does. I would make a motion we uh, approve funding at the staff recommended level. So <coughs> Second that. So I can get a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. And then our next one is uh, about the Moolah Fest. Staff met with Charlie Diggs, the promoter who's doing the Buckles and Bugs, last month to explore the possibility of their taking over the event and hosting it at the Steamville City Park. Um, we wanted to explore the possibility of doing that and also offering a title sponsorship in lieu of underwriting the entire event. <laughs> um, we saw some value for him doing so and uh, having more experience in hosting festivals than, than we do. So um, what is on the table is a title sponsorship for this event. We put down a number similar to Buckles and Bugs, but we can explore any number for that. Is, is that the extent of the city's contribution? They will provide all staff. Mm -hmm. Security, et cetera? They like to work with local police departments for that uh, in other cities. <clears throat> so there will be some, but not to the extent that we've as far as overall city staff that we've provided in the past. Well, there's been a huge input of, of staff time before, during, and after, I think. And it, that's why I asked if this was going to be the total extent of our contribution. It, it will not completely wipe out what city contributes, but it will definitely free up our city staff so they can focus on other events like July 4th and sports Did things we, that they have almost in the same time period. Mm -hmm. Do we think the format with the event will be the same to what's been years past? Or are we going to try to reinvent the whole event? Or is he just going to mirror the one event he's hosting a couple months previous? Or? I think the only difference, main difference, will be the he will fence the park and charge an admission fee. But um, the balloons will still be there. The musicians will still be there. The food trucks. It will have the same feel. Uh, as our other event has had. So that was my question. I could sense I wasn't in the conversation with Charlie. That would be my one thing is that I'm sure there's a lot of people that just go down and wander around and are they going to want to buy, you know, I just think we need to make sure if we go this direction that we need to make sure that the tickets are finding or What's the word I'm looking for? Reasonable. 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 That's Reasonable. It. Reasonable yes. enough that 
if it's not somebody that's down there, they just want to wander around, that it's not out of their chance of going also. Sure. <coughs> I feel like last year was a great event. I mean, I think we're on the cusp of something really becoming special. So I hate to cheap out and undercommit resources and, and take a huge step back on that event. I really do. So I just, if we decide to do this, I hope we can communicate to Mr. Charlie that this is where we were at last year and the expectation moving forward. And I mean, I, I, mean, I think we're awfully close to really becoming a regional type event. And I hate for it to go back. I know the resources that involves from staff, but I mean, I'm not saying that we need to continue to host that event, but. I, well, my, and my, my thing on the, we've spent a lot of money getting and, this thing launched up. Um, maybe it's not 20, but 20,000 would be about 20% of what we spent the last two years, yeah. and each what, year. And correct. so, yeah. you know, even if it was a little more, um, but we had a turnkey type of festival going on. I could see more and more of these happening down there, especially as we try to tie downtown and the park to, to this and getting even you know our local artists and Larry Joe and different things involved. I think this could be something that, that better. And I, I do agree that the event's gotten better each year, but we're still not good at it and government usually isn't great at uh, putting on events. And if we could have a professional come in that does it, that's used to doing it, then uh, we may get a lot more bang for our buck and spend much less of our allocated resources. It could allow us to go do some of the other things we want to do. Another point that he brings to the table, uh, he can bring larger name bands and better I've musicians. Than for a long time. Yeah. We've, we've got to change, and I think you see that with this, you know, some of these people we've had, or probably all of them we've had before that's come to this, but I think that's something that is very important part of it. If I might ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a one-year commitment, correct? Is that what y'all talked about with, uh, with uh, the... Uh... I believe so. We didn't uh, discuss we, it. Yeah, we didn't really discuss the, the length of time. Okay. However, I would recommend that, that we do it on a <coughs> contract in the event that it is not what we anticipated it to be. I think we'll get some, some appearance of what it's going to be with the buckles and bugs uh, coming up in March, I think, yeah. and, and so I think we should have some idea at that point. But uh, what the, the advantage that I see in doing this, and I'm sorry to step on you there, Julie, but but the advantage I see is in the event that this is a short-term thing, a year, two years, five years, our staff will have the ability to watch how it's put on, take pointers from from the professional, and and perhaps reach the the regional festival that was spoken about earlier. Right. Twenty thousand dollars is the total amount. That's Proposed. Better you might want to say something. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I guess like that, the only last thing I say real quick on it, and I'll shut up, is just I'm, I would not be opposed either if we can make this commitment to twenty. But I mean, <coughs> understanding if there needs to be an additional request to come, I would not be opposed to that personally. I mean, to make sure that the event goes as well as need to go. So I think Brandon is one hundred percent correct. We've committed way too much to this event just to. Get cheap, as I'm gonna say, get cheap on it now. Right. Exactly. We need to find a way to save some money, and we don't need to be the business of hosting. I'd sure rather contribute year. more up front if it made those ticket prices more reasonable for people to have access to the park. That might be a negotiating well, point. And it sounds like to me maybe we don't know what our commitment needs to be. Um, and so I hate to go overcommit because as soon as we say we're gonna do forty, then we'll spend forty, and maybe we don't need to spend forty. But that's right. the way the stuff we'll goes. Say forty, it'll be yeah. forty. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm not I'm not taking off the table either to come back, entertain more money at a future date. So. Mm -hmm. That was my whole thought whenever Julie and I discussed this last week. Of She told me that they had had the meeting. I and My first thought was looking at how much we had spent previously to what we could get and save some money to go towards other things in the future. And if we do need to put more money, then, then I'm not opposed to that either, like Mr. Pendleton I mean, we said. Could, on it, we could do five times this amount and end up 
cheaper than we had the last two years. Right. Four dabs. Four dabs. Four dabs. Four dabs. Right. We've only lost eight dabs. Right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yes, sir. I would just recommend um, that in the negotiations, I, I would like to see something that would protect us from, if this turns out to be a one-year event and, and it doesn't live up to our expectations, a guarantee that he can't, within a certain period of time, hold a balloon music festival within a certain number of miles of Stephenville for a certain period of time Not after that. That's a great idea. Thank idea. you. Okay. Do I have a motion? Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll move that we recommend the full council contracting with Mr. Diggs and his promotional company for the uh, hosting of the MUVA event with the city serving as underwriter at the amount of $20,000. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. That's all I've got. Mr. Cook, we'll do items. You, Three and six nominations will come back to four and five in, spe in our special council meeting. Okay, that's fine. Uh, first, we'd like to have a, we have a report from the uh, Main Street Advisory Board. This is kind of an overview from their design review. Uh, Rita will, uh, uh, Rita Cook will uh, give this report and there are some pictures that go along with it uh, that uh, will be uh, posted here. And so, uh, Rita? It's all yours. Uh, thank you for having me come tonight. Uh, I'm the chair of the design committee for the Main Street program and the purpose of the design committee is to uh, support a community's transformation by enhancing the physical and visual assets that set the commercial district apart. And so really what we're all about is making downtown a beautiful place uh, that people want to come to. Uh, the people who serve on the design committee are Christine Newton, Daryl Carpenter, Kim Wilson, Kelly Salt, and Stephanie Beach. And uh, the chair who also attends is Julie Lawrence. Uh, this committee has been meeting and trying to make some decisions about things. And as we met, we started thinking about the fact that before we start visioning about where we should be going, we need to take some time to stop and look around and do a survey or an audit of the downtown area. So that's what we did. On December 1st, uh, we met as a group to do a walk around downtown. And I have some pictures today for you to see, and they're not all uh, aligned with the things that I'm gonna talk about, but you can kind of see the conditions as I walk through this. Uh, we started at, at the alley near Hearsay Bar, and uh, I will say some of these things will be uh, just observations of what we're seeing. Some of them, of course, are things that it, we talked about as we walked did our walk around town. Uh, we said the alley between Hearsay and the other buildings could be painted to increase interest in public use. <coughs> we noticed that there's curb damage between the alley and Scott's that needs some repair. Uh, we saw sandbags that were le left in flower beds and that needed to be removed. Uh, some of the things we noticed that are that miscellaneous signs are kind of haphazardly stuck in different flower beds and uh, we tried to think about if we needed a designated area for that or not. Uh, we had several fire hydrants that we noticed downtown and we said that <laughs> those might even be painted to create some sort of interest. As we walked around we saw that uh, we have a lot of buildings that have uh, two-story buildings and only the bottom part is being used and we talked about the idea of lofts and of course that would required uh, the city to review and revise the, the limiting regulations right now towards those lofts. We have some benches uh, that are already placed, but uh, one of the things that Main Street <laughs> recommended to us in the report that they did for us was that those park benches be faced 
out facing towards the street instead of the opposite way where they're uh, facing right now. We also talked about, uh, we have some areas that have uh, yellow along the curb that there's some niches that we might be able to uh, put permanent tables or chairs there for people to have a place to sit in front of some of the bars and some of the restaurants that we have here in town. Uh, we then went from college to Graham Street area and uh, we, we talked about uh, what's going to happen, you know, with the senior citizens and that what's going to happen to that building and we don't know what's going to happen but when we looked at it we just said that might be a viable parking lot for county employees now who tend to park around in around the square area it would give them a place to park elsewhere to leave those spaces open for people who are visiting downtown one of the things we saw was a tall sidewalk in front of the senior citizens and it's very steep and um, we felt like this was kind of an unsafe area and that especially in the current location where the senior citizens are right now because it's just difficult for those people to get up and down uh, those stairs uh, the sidewalks behind the Allen law firm are crushed and need uh, replacement uh, some of the suggestions that we talked about was lighting up the courthouse steeple using existing city light poles and attaching needed floodlights to them we talked about uh, decorating sidewalks with brick highlights and uh, one of the things we saw was at one of the corners uh, there was a, a post uh, uh, that was just sticking up in at the corner of Graham and College it's cut off and it's just sticking up in the middle of the sidewalk and I don't know about you but I could probably walk along and walk into that without even without even trying you used to have a mailbox on it <laughs> yeah. We talked about uh, we talked about uh, placing some more benches and some trash cans. We have trash cans around town, but maybe placing some on every corner. And one of the things we talked about was uh, we have moolah that's on the pedestal right now. We know that moolah is having a spa treatment elsewhere. We we talked about the the thought of moving moolah even over to the Cowboy Hall of Fame or another location where. Uh, people can get their picture made with moolah. You know, when we had all these Christmas things that were situated around town, it's just amazing how many people wanted to come and have their pictures made with that. So that would be a good way to uh, honor the, the history of moolah and at some point look at some more uh, uh, artistic kinds of things made out of bronze that possibly could celebrate that history. Uh, we talked about moving like tables and chairs in the current parking area in front of uh, Rocking P. Uh, there's an unsolicited be bench that was dropped off in front of the Allen building and I don't know if you've noticed but I've been monitoring that. I think it must have been dropped off, I don't know how long ago, but it's, it's still sitting there. So we talk, saw that. Uh, one of the things we discussed was just using the street cleaner to remove leaves and cigarette butts in front of the chamber office and in the square <coughs> there are build up build ups <coughs> and you know some places actually have uh, the sheriff will have inmates come and remove all the trash and everything around the square on a weekly basis I know where I've lived before I've seen that and that's that's a real productive thing there's a, a light pole in front of Kerbos that it's split and needs to be replaced and there's also a lot of sandbags and construction signage that hasn't been removed yet on uh, North Belknap we talked about painting the plaza concrete blue and gold or purple and white to create a more inviting location that is really a, a great asset for our community and one that we feel like we could utilize better some of the beds around the trees in the plaza have they need ground cover and a lot of the plants are dead and the irrigation lines are actually sitting on top of the ground as, as you walk past there uh, there was a partial brick pathway that goes across a flower bed and it it was just kind of falling apart so if anybody walked across it they might they might stumble so we talked about that uh, one of the things we did talk about and this was just you know as we walked you know we were dreaming about what we could do 
And that's to consider maybe placing a bronze, a bronze statue of a cowboy on the plaza place, on the plaza, uh, to celebrate the cowboy history that we have here, and maybe place some historical signs with action pictures depicting, uh, explaining sig significance of the plaza. We all know what the plaza is about, but I'm not sure that everybody who comes to town knows what the plaza is about. And maybe even a wall that names all of the world-class cowgirls and cowboys in this area. That would be amazing. And I think we would have a lot of support from the, the rodeo folks who would be excited about that. Uh, there's a curb cut in front of Slum Pickens is, that is no longer handicap accessible. And I knew that because I'd had my dad downtown and uh, he wasn't able to get up that. He had one of those motorized carts and he couldn't get up it. Um, considering replacing lamp poles and uh, maybe looking at uh, matching the county ones, uh, I drove downtown the other night and just driving around the square, we had 12 lamp posts and uh, out of the 12, only four were working. So there were eight were out. So, you know, it, it was dark downtown. Uh, some general observations and the, is that many of the sidewalks downtown have deteriorated and, and they're just not safe. There's, there's holes that you can step in. Uh, there's big crevices, especially on the corners. If you look at those pictures up there, you can see that they're fractured. Uh, I noticed uh, today as I drove past Skinny's over there, they have redone that curb and it looks nice. It looks nice, and maybe that's something that we can think about. Uh, trash cans and street signs that are, are missing uh, could be replaced. Uh, there's a lot of weeds and things like that that are growing out of the curbs and sidewalks. Uh, and although this is not a, not a uh, observation, there are numerous empty buildings downtown, and maybe some incentives could be considered to encourage the owners of those buildings to uh, to lease them. Uh, encouraging canopies on buildings will rec create a more inviting environment. And then parking space, uh, well, whatever we can do to encourage more parking space. And Stacy, can you kind of just flip through those and I, I, I want to briefly mention a little, can you do that where I can? I just want to mention as you look through this you can see some of the curbs there's there's the thing on the Cowboy Hall of Fame, but you know that's something that's hard to read. You have to go up, and then it's still hard to read. So uh, things like that, and there you can see the the sidewalk over there is with the the lines and things that are above it, that are above the ground. So all the irrigation pipes and things like that. That's another that's another view of that. You can see some of these things are cosmetic kinds of things, which I think would be. Something you know that's kind of low hanging fruit that maybe Main Street's going to be looking at. There's that post that's split uh, in front of Kerbos, and you can see some of the <coughs> stuff that's growing out of, of different locations. Uh, again, the, the sidewalks, and uh, you can go to the next one. You can see just some different things where holes are in the sidewalks. There's the bench that I keep monitoring. I'm not sure who owns that bench. And you can see just, just, you know, leaves and dirt and things like that accumulate. The hole where, where a pole was before. And there's that post that's sticking up on the corner. So, and you can just kind of see there that it's kind of, you know, cracked and broken up. And, uh, again, just not, and there's a steep, I think that's the steep steps there at the senior citizens. You know, I know when we did sidewalks here a long time ago, they probably had them for buggies and things like that. But uh, I don't know what the percentage is of senior citizens in Stephenville, but you have a lot of people who are over 65 and who are under five foot two, that these curves are hard to, to get up and down. Uh, there you can see that's just a really big open crevice there. I think that's on the corner uh, by... Uh, Scott Allen's law firm. And then you can see again, more leaves and things like that. The reason we did that is there's just wiring up there in the top of that that you can see that's left sticking out. So anyway, uh, 
we, ha we want to, as a design group, to come back to you with priorities and recommendations, but we had to start with this first. We wanted to do an audit and kind of see where we are, and we want you to see where we're going to start from at this point, because we're going to probably, as a group, start now thinking about things we can come back and bring to you as a recommendation from the Main Street Board. Any questions? You did a good job. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. <clears throat> as Rita said, this is just a, a report from the Main Street uh, Design uh, Review uh, Committee for the Main Street Board, and, and uh, they want to leave open the option of coming back to the uh, council in the future and and uh, uh, with some more uh, positive recommendations of, of uh, things that can be done. So, <clears throat> uh, the um, next item on there is, you want to do number six, correct? Yes, sir. Is um, <clears throat> the boards and commissions. This is a discussion item only. And uh, we have been asked to look at this uh, and to discuss this in, in, uh, among our committee. <clears throat> and that is the possibility, do we have uh, more boards and uh, uh, than necessary? Uh, should we think about collapsing uh, some of those? Uh, the ones particularly mentioned to us, and, and I agreed to put it on here for discussion, was the Senior Citizens Board, the Library Board, uh, and that uh, uh, those two, along with the uh, possibility of Parks and Recreation Board, and uh, of collapsing those into one um, advisory board, uh, and uh, I'd like to get some discussion from uh, the group uh, as to is this uh, worth going? I, I, I can tell you that uh, the request that we discuss this uh, came from uh, out of uh, uh, Parks and Leisure Services or Parks and Recreation. And, uh, and Darren was, uh, had one of our uh, councilmen was uh, interested in, in us looking at this uh, and uh, and I believe Kelly was on staff um, we wanted to put it on here just for discussion uh, for our, uh, our members of this uh, of the nominating committee because it would be up to us to make a recommendation to the city with regard to this type of organizational change uh, <clears throat> I can see the positives and the negatives both on this. Politically, I'm not sure that it would be, um, uh, it, it, it may be somewhat difficult to do, uh, simply because of, of uh, we've had these boards in, in, uh, in place for uh, a long period of time. Um, practically, uh, the fact is that it uh, could uh, work to an advantage if you had one advisory board. Now, one of the things that, um, and you had representatives from each one of those entities making up that advisory board. And say so you pick three people from senior citizens, uh, three from a library, and three from parks and recreation, and, and they all become the leisure, leisure services advisory board. Uh, that is uh, that's something uh, that's a possibility. It's a different way of doing it. Uh, you could also take just two of those, the Senior Citizens Board and, and the Library Advisory Board, and, and combine those two into uh, one uh, similarly. Uh, <clears throat> we could do nothing uh, and leave it as it is, as a matter of fact. And that's, that's I don't see a problem either way with this. But if there's... Any of that would like to comment about this, I'd like to hear it. Did Darren have any thoughts on what the advantages would be of combining them specifically? or uh, We can ask him. Is Darren still on? 
Darren, would you like to comment about that? Hey, sorry, I was having to step away. I'm trying to listen in and do the kids' dinner. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so, I mean, the advantage to me is Kelly has numerous committees together, and it's a lot of work to keep up with every committee on top of everything else, trying to run all these things, and we all have. I think if you structured this correctly, you could get this down to one, maybe two committees instead of three. I mean, ideally one with representation from each of these groups. Uh, so a little different committee makeup for that one group, but one recreation and leisure services group that would just be easier to manage. So other than that, I don't know that there's a huge advantage. I, I know that there's been talks, um, and I've been all of them. I, it wasn't great to be on the committee because not much comes out of the committee. So can we kind of merge these together and make it where there's a little more substance? So it was just a thought. Kelly and I talked about it a little bit. It's not something we have to take action on. It's just something we want to bring up. Okay. Thank you, Darren. Uh, and is the, your committee and his committee ought to get together and bring a recommendation or bring some recommendations, options? And benefit that would work too. That'd be my Certainly recommendation. Do that. What what's I, feeding? I can't say there. I mean that's a that's a big task that Kelly's got to prepare for. In addition to preparing for council or committee meetings, uh, from a preparation standpoint, and and giving each of the advisory boards the the um, you know to to his point. You know, it, <coughs> this is, you know uh, I've got another meeting so. To throw something together and not really anything comes out of it or can we can we really focus our efforts and really get something done and effectively um i guess there's always that sense or that feeling of a loss of power but um at the same time i mean uh, i guess that would be our responsibility to make sure that, that whatever is written in the new ordinance that adopts the advisory boards um we, we avoid that concentration of power and, but allow for effective um effective meetings that have effective and positive impacts on the community services that we're providing <coughs> justin is as a matter of fact and, and you're right about that i believe the we put together, I mean, and we've probably had these things since day one uh, in the city, but, and these are advisory boards for the Senior Citizen Center and for the library and for Parks and Recreation. And if you look at the, at the ordinance that created these, and you have those in your packets too, uh, frankly, it, it, uh, indicates that these are supposed to be advisory to the <coughs> council they're supposed to present ideas on programming and on activity and uh, and so forth in this particular area to the council uh, and to make recommendations as such as to as to what direction they're going and sometimes we get it and sometimes we don't and most of the time we don't I might add uh, we'll just get it peripherally so <coughs> I would, uh, I think maybe the mayor has got a good idea here that perhaps we use this opportunity and, and Darren, if you would be willing and to meet and we will have a joint meeting of the, of our, uh, of leisure services and, and, uh, and our nominating committee and we will discuss this and see if we need to take this any further. How do you, how the rest of you people feel? Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I think the point of bringing it up tonight was just to get feedback from general, you know, from everybody on council and see where they wanted to take this and if there was interest or if we just need to let this idea die. So if we want to take it forward, I think, you know, we've got to flesh out a lot of things within this idea to make it work. And, you know, I don't want to just cancel one of these and, you know, I, I want to have a plan going forward so these people can continue to serve out some of their time and then we can phase this in maybe in the next fiscal year or something like that. So uh, I think sitting down and talking further with, with people would be a good idea. Okay. I guess my hesitation is that one 
committee or another feel like that they have been left out and, and don't feel like they're adequately represented or a adequately represent the, the group that they intended to, be it seniors or park or library or whoever, if there's a way to meld those together so that they all feel <laughs> like they're equally representing the group that they chose to represent, I, I don't know that that's necessarily be negative, but that may prove to be very problematic to do. And you're you're absolutely right. And it's probably the only way this could happen. And uh, truthfully, uh, but if we if we start now and we start working with the different boards, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and even bringing them together, uh, they're all under uh, Darren's uh, uh, committee and leisure services. So we would have representation from those uh, in, in meeting together. Mm -hmm. So that would be, uh, it looked to me like it'd be a good way of our school. Might, might be the best way. At least could further the discussion, you right. know, and it may come out and we don't do anything and, uh, and everything, but it will at least mean that we have looked at it mm -hmm. and, uh, and everything. So, okay. If that's I, I agreeable these are, to you guys. These are volunteers, but some of them are quite passionate about their field. Uh, yes. Is that safe to say? I think that's very safe <laughs> to say. We, we agree. Okay. I think if you took a poll of some of these people, though, they would feel like they're very underutilized because of the way we've got these things structured. Yeah. So I think we can strengthen that. I, I'm just not a big fan of this is the way we've always done it. Let's continue to do it this way. Let's look at a different way and see if we can find a better way to do this so that we could be, you know, more responsible with Kelly's time and how we how we move forward with these things. So I think we can find a better way. There's a better solution. We just gotta we gotta sit down and talk about it and flesh it out. I yes. think that's absolutely right. Well, and I think in this direction is uh, maybe the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. I agree. We. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all agree on this, Darren. So, get ready. We'll uh, we'll set it up with you. Okay. Okay. On our our Parks and Leisure Committee and Development Service Committee, we've removed those agenda items from tonight. So the only item we have left is, I will adjourn the City Council Committee meeting and convene City Council Special Council meeting and go to item agenda item number one. <clears throat> Mr. Barnes, is that you? I guess it is. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, tonight you have a memorandum of understanding between the city of Stephenville and the Red County, Texas. Uh, it's for the running of the uh, uh, vaccination <laughs> center that we had during uh, the first push of COVID. Uh, the reason for this MOU at this point is is that for our agreement originally was to split 50-50 with the, the county and we would do the reporting to FEMA. Uh, what FEMA has instructed us is that we have to have the MOU in order to get them reimbursed and that's what this is. Is that your recommendation? Uh, recommendation is to approve the MOU. Is there a uh, dire motion? So moved. Have a second? Second. Have a motion and second. Any further discussion? If you'd vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion aye. passes. <clears throat> Next item. Consider removal of a member of a planning zoning commission. That'd be Mr. Cook. Mr. Chair, we uh, this was on our agenda to discuss at the uh, in our nominating committee. Uh, can we go back to that and do that or uh, because the committee hasn't we can we can discuss it as a committee but we're in it's council meeting now i was just i was instructed that we okay. need to take it straight to council so let's you can we'll let the committee take over and discuss it and if you have a recommendation for the committee then do so at that time uh <clears throat> the uh okay we will we will do that the the we have a member of the of the council that we would recommend uh, that uh, they be removed. Council. I'm um, excuse me. The uh, planning and zoning. Gotcha. And it's an alternate number two in the planning and zoning, and uh, <clears throat> and would recommend that uh, that um, 
uh, place be vacated. It is presently occupied, or we, this council approved uh, Corey Jenkins for that particular uh, position, and we uh, would recommend that that uh, uh, he be removed and asked to uh, uh, reapply at some point in the future, and uh, and that would be uh, my recommendation to the. Uh, to the uh, committee because of a failure to attend <clears throat> no sir because of a little legal problem okay um, I'd like to know how the committee feels about that I support that I do too okay could I hear can we take a motion here or are we are we okay with well that? I we're in the regular council so all it takes I, I just say you take it for advice from your committee and then at that point you can make a motion if you'd like to okay mr. Uh, mayor I would okay <clears throat> I would move that we uh, uh, we remove uh, mr. Corey Jenkins is alternate number two on the Planning and Zoning Commission and ask that uh, he apply again at some point in the future. There a second? A second. Just Brother, a clarification, has he, have we spoken to him? No, sir. Any other discussion? Here now, proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Next item is yours as well, I believe. Uh, the next item that we have <clears throat> is uh, uh, vacancies on the uh, Tourism and Visitors Bureau Advisory Board. We have one person, frankly, from the, uh, that is eligible for that, represents the hotel, uh, and uh, we would uh, recommend that uh, um, and here I, if you'll forgive me, Stacy, I have lost that sheet of paper. Um, her name was Tina Marshall. Sonia Olvera. Oh, uh, Olvera. Sonia Alvera, and she's uh, she is the only one that is applied. Uh, she represents the hotel industry, and we uh, uh, and that we have that position open on the uh, tourism uh, advisory board, and would recommend that she be uh, appointed to the tourism advisory board. That's really our only choice on this particular one. Mm -hmm. You making that form of a motion? It is a form of a motion from our uh, committee that we appoint uh, Ms. Alvera to the Tourism Advisory Board. There a second? Second. All right. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Next item we have is recreation, I guess. Are you going to do that or who's going to? Yeah, Main Street. We have one Main Street thing. Okay. On here too. Oh, so it's two different appointments. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the other appointment is that we have a opening. Uh, Mr. Tyree Slappy has resigned uh, from the Main Street Board. We have a uh, we have an application in uh, from a uh, from uh, Darren Carpenter, who is uh, the owner of Scott's Flowers who is uh, pretty well known around here, I think, from everybody. He is a uh, solid business person. He's been a very strong advocate for the uh, Main Street program and downtown in general. And uh, we would recommend that uh, he be uh, uh, appointed to fill the unexpired term of Tyree Slack. Is that a formal motion? I would make that motion to replace okay. Mr. Slack with you. Yeah. And uh, that's super to fill the unexpired term. Thank you. I have a motion here. Second, okay. Further discussion? 
Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. Aye. Same time opposed, motion passes. I'm sorry, were there, was there another one or was that just those two? No, that's uh, that's it, sir. I'm sorry, Gerald, I, I didn't follow up like I should have. Not a problem. Next item is consider approval expenditure of funds for repairs at Splashville. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, it has been brought to my attention that there are some significant repairs that need to be done uh, to Splashville. Apparently, a plaster job that was done a couple of years ago was not done properly, and we have some severe issues with the, uh, the pool and the uh, Lazy River itself. There are also some plumbing issues. Uh, this is uh, approximately $250,000 worth of, of, uh, of uh, expenditures that we are proposing. It's two fifty five seven seven thirty eight. The all of the vendors involved are on buy board. Uh, one vendor is for the plaster, which is uh, and plaster and tile, which is two twenty five sixteen forty one. Uh, the Lazy River Pump and Plumbing is about $19,000, and Rick, you and I did not discuss the spray pad. Can you kind of inform, you, you're much more attuned to, to what's going on and how we've gotten to this point. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Rick Price, our park superintendent. Okay, <clears throat> so we sent out to two different vendors, uh, two well-known vendors in the pool industry. One was Sunbelt and one was Progressive. <coughs> uh, both responded and like Mr. Barnes said, both of them uh, gave back quotes that are on by board. We found during the, uh, during the quote session on this that um, in some instances, one gave better quotes than the other. And uh, we had uh, gone with them and uh, we had combined the Lazy River and the pool together uh, for the quote. But there were other things. There was the, the plumbing for the sump pump, or I'm sorry, the um, Lazy River pump located on the south side of the pool. And uh, there was also the splash pad. Um, the splash pad on this uh, both gave uh, quotes. One was thirty six nine ninety, and the other was eighteen two o four. It was my understanding that Mrs. Votipka had uh, included all these into the original total amount for the repairs. Um, the pools are not the only problem. There's problems with our decks. Um, the, the weather stripping that's between the cracks um, is deteriorating and it's <coughs> what, what's happening is water's getting in there, moisture's getting in there. Um, and when we have very cold weather, we now have expansion and we end up having cracks and things happen to our, our pool deck. So in the um, totals for the pool and the Lazy River amounts, we've included up to a thousand feet of crack repair uh, for those pools. Is that included in the total that you gave us, Alan? I believe it is, sir. That is, in, is all total. Yes, sir. One last question. One question I have is, you mentioned earlier that the problem was that part of the plaster or whatever wasn't done correctly last time. How are we going to make sure it's done correctly this time? Uh, <coughs> I have, so that I asked. It might not have been done incorrectly. Doug. It was last time. It was a patch job, so we did not replaster the entire pool last time we did this. Okay. That was that was a partial repair. This is to replaster the entire surface of the pool. All right. Thanks, Darren. Will Thanks, this Darren. be a, a warranted procedure? Yes, sir. There will be warranty. Other questions? Who did it last time? I don't remember the committee. I uh, think they. I don't know. Not yeah. part of this bid. I'm not sure. Not part of this bid. No, sir. No. 
They we we had some difficulty. I don't I don't remember if they went out of business shortly after the repair. I, I just remember there was some big convoluted difficulty to get them back. Darren, you want to have some comments? No, I mean I've been out and looked at the pool several times uh, with Kelly, and I mean this is we we kind of only have two options at this point, and it's either to do these repairs and get the pool back up and going, or we probably wouldn't be able to open the pool this summer just because of how extensive uh, some of the problems are with the pool itself right now. So um, the water's getting down underneath these pockets, and it's just going to continue to eat away at that pool finish. So it's only going to get worse, and I mean I think we have a, we built it and we own it, so I think we have a duty to repair it and maintain it. Anybody else so have any questions? I, I would just I'm curious as to why this is suddenly an emergency with emergency funding, or a problem that was known. I understand there weren't bids quite ready until budget was almost finished. But we knew there was a problem. We knew it was going to be expensive. Why didn't we earmark something in the budget so that we don't come into this with a, if you don't do it now, you're not going to have a pool this summer and back everybody into a corner? I was unaware of the, the problem during the budget proceedings. Uh, when I found out about it was probably a month or six weeks ago. I think that's probably the biggest problem I have. It's it's a quarter of a million dollars on a problem that I have a pull that didn't start overnight. Right. And and the lack of oversight it, and splash feels a good I mean the lack of oversight that we've had over there is extremely <coughs> disappointing. And it's been extremely costly for something that doesn't make money anyway to then have to come out of pocket two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars to even open it's ridiculous i understand the two options <laughs> you can't you can't have spent millions of dollars to have splash bill and not open it but to have to come because of lack of maintenance and lack of taking care of to come spending two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars an emergency is is crazy Well, and I think I think to my point, it, it, we got bids it, it, beyond budget. We got bids at the end of the budget, which means we've had bids for four months, and we're just now seeing it. It's not entirely true, sir. We did have conversations about this during our budget process. We didn't know the extent of what the issue was. We began getting bids back during that time, but they've been working on them for the last several months, trying to finalize them and get people out here in different companies and those sort of things. So it wasn't completely unknown. It was, we didn't know what the scope of the entire problem was. And Rick and his crew uh, have been trying to get their finger on that, working with these companies. Uh, but we did begin these discussions uh, last summer, late last summer. Anybody else? What What are the, the general overall conditions of the other pumps, filters, operating equipment, the overall condition of the facility itself? They've worked the last few years and been making some improvements there in different places. We repainted a bunch of stuff last year. Uh, they've replaced pumps and different things as, as they wear out and mm -hmm. need to be replaced. Uh, I. I think this one, Mr. Huck, would be kind of hit it on the head. It's just a, it was a lack of maintenance over the years. And when it was first noticed, we tried kind of a, a discount attempt at fixing it. And now we're paying for that. We put a Band-Aid on, on a, a serious severe issue. wound. Yes. <clears throat> this but, is a significant amount of money. Yes, sir. And I'm not, I'm, I'm in favor of spending it because I feel like that's a, facility that we need to have open but we certainly need to be more mindful of, of the maintenance and care in the future so that you know we can keep up with it at a little a little easier pace and a little more affordable pace perhaps no i absolutely agree i think we probably need to fine-tune our 
annual maintenance plan for that facility to ensure that we don't we don't end up here again. Right, and I, that's why I ask you. I know we've been doing maintenance on it and, and trying to keep up, which we need to do with everything. This is not an exception to that, but we need to we maybe need to focus a little more on having a maintenance schedule or something that we try to adhere to to keep keep it a little closer uh, within budget and, and then be able to budget for it also. Yes, sir. And maybe our rates and how we're even running this thing. Because if it doesn't pay for itself, it doesn't pay for itself every year anyway. No. <laughs> it operates at a loss as is and then to come spend $250,000 on it to even open it so we can lose money this summer on it. The one fortunate uh, thing is we uh, don't have debt service on it yet, right? That's correct. The debt's been paid off. Yeah. Yeah. That's I one will, good thing. I'll, I will defend Kelly on this. I think Kelly has got better practices in mind to keep us up. I think she. Well, this clearly a, wasn't. This clearly didn't happen overnight. No. Yeah, I don't so, think yeah, we, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not attacking anybody. Too. Clearly didn't happen no, overnight. No. <laughs> well, and I just want to make sure and defend her. So, I mean, I, I I know that she's got in mind the right course of action to keep this thing up and going. And I think she's a little, it's hard to know what to do because when you go out there and look at this, I mean, you're missing tiles all over the pool and that stuff didn't happen in the last year that she's been here. You're missing tiles, you've got cracks, you just got so much general maintenance that hasn't happened. And so for her to get that stuff back on course, I really think she's she's making strides to get these things back. And it's just unfortunate that it, it's gonna come at a $250,000 price tag to get this back. I think from here we can really fine-tune how we do this in the future and how we maintain these things and I, I think we'll be in a much better place <clears throat> other discussion do i hear a motion i move we approve the expenditures as presented in the presented amount for the repairs of splash field. second second have a motion second any more discussion proceed to vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. same sign opposed aye. motion passes that's the last agenda item. Stacy, is there anything else that I'm missing? Okay, it's the last agenda item, so we're going to stand adjourned at 718. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>